What's up guys? So it is the worst when you are working on an application and all of a sudden you start getting these duplicate actions that you don't want to happen. Uh, for me, recently I was working on an app where we were getting these duplicate notifications sent to the user's phone and we were saying, what's going on here? And it turned out that the culprit was we were using an async await function and a use effect hook and we weren't cleaning it up properly. And so because we didn't clean it up properly, uh, instead of something um, like this happening where you type in your name and you get an alert of what's typed in, uh, we were getting, uh, well, I'll just show you, D-Y-L-A-N. So let's say I type that in, I have an async await function waiting in the back and it's giving me a notification for every letter. This is a contrived example, I know, uh, but it's just to show the nature of async await. Uh, this is way more applicable in something like notifications or pulling data, any sort of API call which takes time and that you need to wait for. Uh, and so we're gonna solve that today. If that sounds interesting to you, um, dive right in. If you would rather not watch a whole video, if you just wanna get the code and you wanna figure it out yourself, I'm gonna have a gist up here um, on GitHub, you can check the link. Just make sure you check out this return function. This is, this is what the cleanup does. If you don't know what that is, I'd recommend sticking around and learning what it is. That way you can get to the bottom of it and really understand what's going on. Uh, if you haven't been around here before, my name is Dylan Albertazzi. I am a cloud engineer living in Bed, Oregon, and I make YouTube videos on React and AWS. And so if you find this useful, consider dropping a like or subscribing. Uh, we'd love to have you around. Uh, so without further ado, let's hop into the code here. I'll get it out. So this right now, what we have is the broken code. We have a uh, use effect hook, well, use the effect hook that changes when value changes, that input field that you saw um, is value. Every time we type, value is getting reset to whatever's in the text box. And so right now what's happening is every time use effect gets called, we have this handle change function. And uh, every time something gets typed, we are gonna call handle change. Handle change is gonna wait one second. Uh, and let me go back to the gist. I, I like the comments I have here. And I'm just gonna add them in as we go. Waiting one second mimics an API call. So what we're doing is we're making our API call, we're waiting one second. And then once that's done, we're just gonna send an alert of the value. Once again, I know this is contrived, but it's just, it gets the point across. So we're gonna do that. Great, the only issue is that what if I type in a bunch of letters? I only want the last one. Just like if something updates and I need to make multiple API calls, I just want the most recent data. So what we can do is this beautiful thing called a cleanup for your use effect hook. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna paste it in what it looks like here. Basically, if you do, if you return and you return a function, that is what's called your cleanup function in use effect. And so basically how this works is every time your component gets unmounted or called again, and that's, this, that's the one we're looking for, called again, we are gonna call this function. It doesn't matter how far into this await timeout we are, we're going right here and we are gonna call whatever's in here. Um, you can see we're, we're missing a declaration for is canceled. Uh, and so basically the way to go about this is to check, oh wait, put it there, not inside of the function. Oh, why are we getting red dots? Never use. Oh, we need to set it. Okay, sorry. Put it at the top and then, okay, so aside. Basically how we handle this is we want to check to see if we have canceled our API call. And so what, what we wanna do is basically, if I type in a letter and then I type in another letter, let's say type in a D and then a Y, I wanna cancel the alert for the D because the most recent is DY. If I were to type DYL, I wanna cancel D, DY, but keep the alert for DYL because that's the most recent. So how we're gonna do that is every time this use effect hook gets called, we are gonna set a variable called isCancel. We're gonna say false. We're gonna say it's not canceled yet. 
And then inside of here, inside of our, uh, our function handle change, we're going to check before we do an alert, we're still going to do this timeout. It's mimicking that we're getting data, but before the alert, we're going to say if is canceled is falsy. If it's false or any other falsy value, we are going to do the alert. But if you end up actually calling or re-rendering this value before await timeout finishes, before we can actually hit this block of code, then we're going to set is canceled is to true. And so then by the time it reaches this block of code, is canceled is going to be true and it's going to skip. It's not going to send the alert. Let me go over that again because it can be hard to wrap your mind around the first time. So I'm going to step through it one more time really simply. So let's say we have a D. I type in D. What's going to happen is use effect is going to get called because value changed. We're going to set is canceled as to false. And then we're going to come down to handle change and we're going to check and then handle change is going to get called. We're going to come up here and now we're waiting for one second, one milli 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds. Bam, here goes a Y. We're still at 200 milliseconds. We haven't hit this line of code, but I just hit a Y. Use effect got called again. That means we jump right to this return cleanup value. So we're setting is canceled to true for my D input. Great. So now Y is here. 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, bam, L. There's D, Y, L. Now we're going to call use effect again. Whoops, we didn't get to wait for our timeout. We didn't get our data back. We're going right here. D, Y is set to true. Okay, L, A, N. Finally, we get to the N. We're done. What's going to happen is I type in N. We're waiting 100 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, 800, 900, 1000 milliseconds. We're going to drop down is canceled is still false. And we're going to do our alert for this final value. Um, great. So I hope that makes sense. If not, drop some comments, talk about it, try to think through it yourself and do this. That's going to really help connect the dots. Um, that's really the best way to learn. So I'd recommend getting the gist and going from there if you're still having trouble. But we are going to look at that. Did I save that code? Okay. And hopefully what should happen is if I type in Dylan, I should only get one alert. D-Y-L-A-N. Bam. There you have it. I hope you have a great day. If this was helpful, like, subscribe, and become part of the crew. We will see you in the next video.